0300 hours, Pacific Ocean. The USS Gerald R. Ford cuts through black water. 1,500 feet behind the carrier, sensors are listening, always listening. Then they hear it, mechanical whir, high frequency motor, Doppler shift accelerating. Torpedo, range, 2,000 yards, speed, 50 knots, bearing, inbound, red alarm. 20 sailors snap to stations. The soft kill system deploys decoys automatically. Useless. This torpedo isn't chasing sound. It's wake homing. Following the scar of bubbles, the carrier's propellers carve into the ocean. You can't fake turbulence with noise. Fire control. Going hot. Craw away. A cylindrical launcher rotates. A 200-pound interceptor drops into the water. Chemistry becomes violence. Lithium ignites with sulfur hexafluoride. 1600 degrees. Water flashes to superheated steam. A turbine screams to life. Craw accelerates to 60 knots. Active sonar pings. Lock. 90 seconds later, 800 yards from the carrier, the interceptor detonates. The blast fragmentation warhead creates a shockwave that travels through water like a hammer through glass. Faster than sound, lethal in every direction. Enemy torpedoes steering vanes shatter. Guidance collapses. Warhead detonates harmlessly. Muffled thud through the hull. Threat eliminated. Physics doesn't negotiate, and neither does the US Navy. Red alarm fades to green. The Ford keeps steaming. 5,000 Americans just survived, and most will never know. This is the new reality. For 70 years, the only defense was run and hope. No ability to shoot back. American carriers were prey underwater. That era is over. The weapon that just saved the Ford, Craw, is the blueprint for the future fleet. For the first time in history, surface ships can fight back. But what you just saw? That capability didn't exist five years ago. And the story of how we got here will piss you off. It took 70 years to get here, decades of vulnerability, billions wasted, 13 years of catastrophic failure, until one partnership cracked the code. Type hard kill. If you're ready to see how American innovation turned weakness into dominance. The U.S. Navy had one defense against torpedoes for 70 years. Soft kill, the ANSLQ. 25. Nixie. A towed acoustic decoy dragged behind the ship. Make noise louder than your propellers. When enemy torpedoes chase sound, they hit the fake target instead of the real ship. Billions invested in this system, installed on 165 vessels. It worked for decades because Soviet torpedoes hunted acoustically. They listened for propeller noise. Nixie exploited that. Louder fake beats, quieter real. Then, the enemy changed the game. Wake homing torpedoes. Traditional torpedoes aim sensors forward, listening for sound. Wake homing torpedoes point sensors upward. They don't listen at all. They track the scar the ship leaves on the ocean's surface. A 100,000-ton carrier churning through water at 30 knots creates chaos. Microbubbles, temperature shifts, density changes, physical turbulence spreading 300 feet wide. This wake persists 30 minutes after the ship passes. The wake homing torpedo swims back and forth across this highway of disturbed water. Sine wave pattern? Following bubbles upstream to the source to the vulnerable stern where propellers spin. Here's the nightmare. It ignores sound completely. Nixie makes noise. Wake homing doesn't care. It tracks physical disturbance. You can't decoy turbulence. You can't fake bubbles with speakers. The billion dollar soft kill system becomes worthless. Two defenses remain. Execute a violent turn to break the trail or kill the torpedo first. The problem is physics. Carrier turning radius over two miles. At 30 knots, that turn takes minutes. Wake homing torpedo traveling 50 knots adjusts in real time. It compensates faster than the ship can turn. Do the math. But before you calculate, understand what a turn means for a supercarrier. This isn't a speedboat. When the helm goes hard over, 100,000 tons of steel lists 15 degrees. In the galley, trays slide off tables. 
On the flight deck, chains groan as they strain to hold down $60 million fighter jets. The sheer inertia fights you. The ship shudders. It bleeds speed. It is a violent, desperate maneuver, and against a wake-homing torpedo, it is completely futile. You are trying to drift a skyscraper to dodge a bullet. Physics is simply not on your side. Can't outrun it. Can't outturn it. Can't decoy it. Only answer, destroy the torpedo before impact. For 70 years, the Navy had no way to do that. No hard kill capability. No interceptor. No ability to shoot back. China's U-10 uses wake homing today. Russia keeps improving it. Every adversary knows American surface ships have been defenseless. 70 years of hoping the enemy would chase the decoy. 70 years of doctrine built on deception, obsolete the moment wake homing arrived. And for 70 years, we had to swallow that reality. The Navy tried to build a hard kill system. The failure was catastrophic. Surface Ship Torpedo Defense Program, SSTD. Goal, small interceptor torpedo that kills threats before they reach the ship. They called it CAT, countermeasure anti-torpedo. Perfect on paper, lightweight, stored with Nixie decoys. Drops into water when sensors detect threat. Blast fragmentation warhead. Budget, over $700 million. Timeline, operational within a decade. Reality, psychological torture. Testing began, problems emerged immediately. But the core issue wasn't weak propulsion or bad guidance. The real killer, false positives. The sensor system couldn't tell real threats from noise. It saw torpedoes everywhere, fish schools, whale pods, ocean currents, echoes. Dolphin clicks. Look at the sonar technician. He's likely 22 years old. He's staring at a waterfall display, a screen of green static and scrolling lines. He has exactly four seconds to make a call. If he ignores the signal and it's a real torpedo, 5,000 people die. If he calls it in and it's a whale, he wakes up the strike group admiral and ruins flight ops for the whole fleet. Now imagine doing that while the system is screaming at you 50 times a deployment. The mental load is crushing. The trust evaporates. Sailors started calling the CAT system the boy who cried wolf, not as a joke, but as a warning. It became dangerous to keep the system turned on. Picture this, 0217 hours, carrier captain asleep after 18 hours on the bridge. 5,000 sailors rotating through night watch. Alarm klaxons rip through the ship. Torpedo, torpedo, torpedo. Captain on the bridge in 15 seconds. Heart pounding, adrenaline spiking. 5,000 people bolt awake, grabbing gear, sprinting. Sonar operators tracking the contact, fingers hovering over launch triggers. Sweat, focus, death approaching at 50 knots. 90 seconds later, contact fading, possibly biological. A pod of dolphins, stand down, try to sleep. Adrenaline still coursing, fatigue is a weapon. And for 13 years, that broken system was pointing it straight at our own heads. You can't send carriers to battle stations for marine life. You can't launch million-dollar interceptors at schools of fish. You can't suspend flight ops every time a whale swims past. The technology failed operationally because nobody believed it anymore. After 13 years and $700 million, the program was canceled. No operational systems, no working hard kill capability. The fleet went back to square one. Hope the decoy works no other option. The hardware didn't fail. The trust did. It failed because nobody believed it when it screamed torpedo. Worse than having no defense, because it taught an entire generation that hard kill systems don't work. That shooting back underwater is fantasy. They were wrong. Penn State Applied Research Lab, Navy's University Brain Trust, they don't wear uniforms, but they bleed red, white, and blue. Navy partner for decades, embedded in defense research. They watched SSTD fail in real time. They saw the false positives, understood why captains stopped trusting, knew electric propulsion was weak. But they recognized something contractors didn't. The contractors tried to make the interceptor quiet, stealthy, like a submarine. 
Wrong philosophy. PSU. ARL. Understood. You don't need a ninja. You need a bullet. The breakthrough. SKEPS. Stored chemical energy propulsion system. Not batteries. Not electric motors. Chemistry. Violent chemistry. Lithium metal meets sulfur hexafluoride gas. They don't just burn, they react with the intensity of a controlled explosion. Lithium ignites at 1600 degrees. The reaction with SF6 releases massive thermal energy in milliseconds. Heat flash boils water into superheated steam. Steam drives a turbine at brutal RPM. Staggering power density. Truck engine force in a Coke can package. Energy output exceeding battery chemistry by orders of magnitude. A standard electric battery is heavy. It gets tired. As it drains, it gets weaker. The Skeps engine doesn't get tired. This chemical reaction is constant fury. It delivers peak horsepower from the first millisecond to the final detonation. It doesn't fade. It doesn't get tired. It screams at 100% capacity until the target is destroyed. It's the difference between a marathon runner and a sprinter on steroids. Standard electric torpedo. 40 knots for minutes before draining. Craw. 60 knots sustained for the entire mission. Faster than enemy torpedoes. Range, 2,000 yards. Small enough to carry 30 to 40 rounds per ship. But here's what made contractors nervous. Skeps is loud. And for the first time in 70 years, that was the whole damn point. Chemical reaction roars. Turbine screams. Water cavitates violently. Acoustically, craw sounds like a freight train underwater. Traditional doctrine. Noise equals death. Stealth is survival. Quieter is better. PSU. ARL. Threw out that rulebook. Craw isn't a submarine hiding for months. It's an interceptor surviving 90 seconds. Launch to impact. Sprint mission. One target, one kill. Stealth doesn't matter when you're the bullet. We stopped trying to whisper. We started screaming. Enemy torpedo already knows you're coming. Active sonar just painted it. Question isn't whether it hears you. Question is whether it can evade a weapon moving 60 knots with terminal guidance. It can't. Philosophical shift from stealth to speed, from endurance to lethality. They built a weapon that wins by being faster and more violent, not quieter and more patient. They call it CRAW, Compact Rapid Attack Weapon. But in the Pentagon's technical manuals, it carries the newest designation, the Mark 58, a micro-weapon with the power of a game-changer. Maximum lethality and minimum volume. Weight, 200 pounds. Half the size of standard torpedoes. Store two or three in the same space. Magazine depth matters. Multiple torpedo attacks? 30 rounds instead of 10 could mean surviving versus running dry. But Craw isn't just defensive, dual purpose. Hunts enemy submarines, too. Small warhead damages critical systems, propellers, control surfaces, sonar. Mobility kill as good as sinking. Every surface ship becomes anti-submarine platform. Not waiting to get shot, striking back. Integration, directly into existing ANSLQ. 25 Nixie platform, same launcher, one console. Operator chooses, soft kill decoy or hard kill interceptor. Layer one, Nixie seduces with sound. Layer two, craw destroys with physics, belt and suspenders. That's American engineering. If one system fails, the backup kills for you. No single point of failure. Cost, $1.2 million per round. Protecting a $13 billion carrier, 5,000 lives, not expensive. Insurance. Blueprint, fleet-wide integration. Targeting 165 ships. Every carrier, every cruiser, every destroyer. Transforming targets into hunters. Contractors spent 13 years building a silent interceptor playing by old rules. Navy's university partner built a screaming bullet that rewrote them. Following doctrine versus understanding physics. For 70 years, enemy submarine commanders had psychological advantage. They knew American ships couldn't shoot back. Math was simple, get close, launch wake homing torpedo, score mission kill, carrier can't decoy, can't outrun, can't turn fast enough. 
risk-reward, favorable. Confidence breeds aggression. Craw flips that calculation. Enemy submarine captain now thinks, carrier has hard kill. My torpedo might get intercepted. If I launch and miss, I reveal position. Their destroyers triangulate. Their Virginia class has firing solution on me. Hunter becomes hunted. For decades, silence was their ultimate weapon. Inside that enemy hull, the only sound they ever heard was the distant rhythm of our propellers, a lullaby that bred arrogance. But the game just changed. The moment they pulled the trigger, a new sound tears through the eternal black of the ocean. It's not the whisper of water, it is the shriek of the craw. It isn't subtle. It is a metallic roar of pure rage shredding through the physics of the deep. On the sonar, it grows louder, closer, like a heartbeat counting down to zero. The captain's icy calculation shatters, replaced by pure terror. He realizes the brutal truth. The counter shot is loose. It is faster than anything he has. And there is no escape. The ocean is vast. But for a Russian submarine captain right now, the world just shrank into a steel coffin. Firing isn't a free shot. It's revealing position with no guarantee. Gambling a billion dollar submarine and 135 lives against maybe damaging a carrier. Risk reward just flipped. Deterrence that works. Not invincible, but uncertain. Made the captain hesitate, calculate, question. Hesitation underwater equals survival for surface ships. Layered defense. Nixie and Craw as team. Sensors detect incoming. Fire control has options. Nixie first. If acoustic homing, maybe Nixie wins. If wake homing, Nixie fails. Craw activates. Drops. Sprints 60 knots. Belt and suspenders. For 70 years, enemy submarine captains held advantage beneath the surface. That psychological edge evaporated. Ocean's power dynamics shifted when first Craw destroyed a torpedo in testing. Every submarine commander watching intelligence reports understood. Hunting American carriers with impunity is over. How did America go from 70 years of running to shooting back? Three things. Enemy forced our hand. Wake homing made soft kill obsolete. Navy faced truth. Adapt or accept vulnerability. We failed. Publicly. Expensively. 13 years. $700 million. SSTD chased wrong solution. False positives destroyed trust. Contractors built what they knew instead of what physics demanded. Partnership refused to quit. Navy turned to PSU, ARL. Didn't improve old design. Threw out rulebook. Chemical propulsion. Speed over stealth. Screaming bullet. Answer wasn't more money. Different thinking. 70 years. Sailors deployed knowing they couldn't fight back. Relied on decoys. Relied on hope. Relied on s enemy mistakes. That generation earned respect. Served anyway. Next generation won't hope. They'll have craw. 30 rounds per ship. Destroy torpedoes before impact. First time in history, surface ships shoot back beneath waves. Race continues. China building quieter subs. Russia developing faster torpedoes. Threat evolves. But America proved. We turn defense into offense. Transform hunted into hunter. Take 70 years of vulnerability and flip it into advantage. They spent decades building a stick to poke the bear. We just built a bear trap. We built a monster to hunt monsters. And for the first time in 70 years, the hunters in the deep are looking over their shoulders. If you're proud American sailors finally have the firepower they deserve, hit like. If you want to see what happens when the world's best Navy stops playing defense, subscribe. 70 years running, 13 years failing. One breakthrough that flipped the ocean. This is the hard kill revolution.